All right, finally, we're talking about intellectual property and what we can do about it and what it is. So copyright is what probably most of you understand as the thing that protects your intellectual property. Brian Harvey, my colleague, had a great phrase, which he summarized with copyright law, which is a negotiation between the artists and the engineers and the scientists, which is the following. I'll read it to you. I normally don't read, but this is such a good quote. We're going to make a bargain with creators. We're going to give you a limited time monopoly to profit from your idea in return for sharing your idea with us. Congress keeps extending the duration of copyright. And part of that, you see the, the logo, uh, that's the CTEA, or the Copyright Term Extension Act. And the idea was that copyright's supposed to exp eventually expire, right? Eventually, when it's copyright expires, it goes back into the public domain. It's, everyone's, it, it's owned by everybody, OK? You can make profit after you cannot. It's just everybody. It's, it's where? It's, it's, the, it's out there. And Mickey Mouse is Disney's bread and butter. And so whenever Mickey, whenever, so Mickey Mouse was done back in the early 1900s. And as Mickey Mouse's his copyright has come up, all of their lawyers say, can we just extend? Because it's kind of the big intellectual property of that company in the creative space. And so can we extend it a little bit more? And so the past times they've extended it. They've extended it now to have more time. So that was the act where they said, no, don't extend it. Allow it to go back into free, free space, and now we can all use it. But they say, no, it's ours. We built it. So let's keep it. So they, ad they advocated, and they lobbied to extend it. And guess what? They extended it. They passed the CTEA. So the Constitution says the following. Article 1, Section 8 says, the Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and the useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventions uh, the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. That's exactly the, the letter of the law in the Constitution. So uh, let's talk about some more of this. Um, on, the, on the right, you're going to see a picture of the Statute of Anne, which is known as the origin of modern copyright law. So this goes back to 1710. Um, and here's some thoughts about this, right? So, that, so you say, OK, that's good. That's all we're done. We're all well and good. Copyright exists. It protects these artists. They file for copyright, and you can't use them unless you give explicit permission, and that's fine. OK, well, let's think about this. We, we had a survey earlier in the class, and maybe many of you have maybe taken a survey of, is the music on your cell phone yours? Wide, here's a comment. Widespread access to digitized information raises questions about intellectual property. One of the things you read in Blown to Bits was that one of the seven cones is when things go into bits, when things go digital, things change. The idea has never been true before that you could have a thing that you created with your own sweat and blood and tears, that you built it, and it's digital. And now you can make a copy of it, and the original stays the same. It's never been the case with physical things. There's nothing, you know, one apple, I made an apple, and I, I can't just make another apple. So now I have identical things. And that thing now can be leaked for me, stolen for me, or I can give it to a friend who then gives it to 10 friends, and now all of a sudden it's gone, and I can't bring it back. And now it's viral. Now it's gone to every single computer, every single human person who has digital access to the internet. It's out there. And, and those copies are there that save to hard drives. I can't get it back. I still have my own, but I can't necessarily profit from my own anymore, because who wants to buy it if you, get, if you all have it for free on your own computers? So there's a real issue that brings up issues, obviously, of intellectual property and the millennials and others believe, oh, it's, I'm not hurting anybody. There's just bits. I'm passing bits from me to you. I'm the guy who had, I'm the guy running a server. I'm not doing anything wrong. Illegal files go on my server. They get downloaded. I'm just holding bits. I don't know who cares. Bits are bits. But you're facilitating the idea that you distribute distribution of this material. The creation of digital audio, video, and textual content by combining existing contents, content has been impacted by copyright concerns. So that's the mashup space. That says, now you want to make a mashup. Oh, that's, that's cool. So you take a snippet of sound here, and a snippet of maybe a collage, maybe a, a sound sample from other music. And there's a the question of how much can you borrow before it's illegal? And the answer is you can't borrow any of it. People say, oh, I, I, I verified the law this morning. Uh, if you have, no, no, it's common practice. If you use less than 10 seconds, it's, it's fair. It's not. You can't use anything, right? People have been sued because you used the riff from another song. You made a trillion dollars on your main song because you used the bass line from that song. You stole it deadpan. You stole it from them, and you made the money. They're like, hey, that's my bass line. I made that bass line. You didn't change it. Yeah, correct. And they want the money, and they have a right to that money. So it brings up issues when you're thinking about re remixing space. This was a concern. People had DVDs. And people had DVDs, and they shared them. And that's you know, all these movie companies put their money and put their stuff out there. And then they decided to encrypt them. 
Okay? They encrypted them with something called uh, DSS, Digital Scramble System. And so that able, was able to scramble the data in a way you can't get it. But you couldn't play DVDs on Linux boxes. Linux is a kind of operating system, and you couldn't do it. You, I, mean, I, buy, I have a machine, and I buy a DVD. I bought the DVD, I bought the machine. They don't work. So somebody wrote software called D, like to undo it, D something, D-E, CSS. And they wrote C code. That will let it, well, all they really meant was to, to, to play it. But once you've played it, you can now screen grab everything and make a copy and now ship it out uncompressed, un CSS. So all of, the, all of these people who had creative content were saying, ah, that's, that's software that gives our stuff away. You can't have that. So they applied, they lobbied, again, Congress for a law to prevent that. And that law was passed unanimously. It's called the Digital Millennial Copyright Act, DMCA. And that basically says it's illegal to undermine any attempt to, uh, under, to undermine any scrambling of, of, of content. I have some content scrambled because of, I, have, I want intellectual property of the, of the original people. I want to protect it, so I squashed it in, in its encoding. If you try to break that encoding, you will be in violation of, of, of DMCA. And that's a challenge in making that. It's no longer as easy. Now, sometimes that, that encoding might have had some artifacts, and that's an issue. The file size is bigger. It's hard to read in some machines. There's some issues that come up as you have that. Okay. What's this? There's a number. This is a really big number. It's a prime number. So prime numbers are pretty magical. They have only devices themselves in one. That's an illegal number. In fact, that's the first illegal prime number ever known to man. Illegal. That number violated the law. Like, how's that possible? One of the big ideas we learned in this class is that bits can be encoded as many things as numbers. So if you take bits, what are the bits encoding? The bits are a C program, DCSS. The C program that does the encryption of the DVD program, the thing that violates the DMCA, that program, you can add extra spaces at the end. So they kept adding extra spaces until when they converted that to digital, when they en encrypted it, when they just kind of converted that to raw bits. We can show you how to encode the characters. Each character has a, has a particular bit sequence. Each character is, a, is four bits. Each character is that. Each character is actually eight bits for that. So, so you take all the characters in the C file and you make them numbers. That's an 8-bit number in, in bits. You convert that to base 10. There's a base 10 number. That base 10 number is a prime number, which when you reverse process it, gives you C code. And you run that C code, now you can decrypt all the DVDs of the world. So that was the first illegal prime number. That was done in 1999, and it was released in 2000. There were t-shirts that had the code, just the code written out that says this t-shirt is illegal. Because the t-shirt was sharing the code that was helping to undermine the DVD encoding scheme. Okay? So what are some of the legal and ethical concerns raised by innovation. So first of all, you know that innovations are affecting society. So innovations raise legal and ethical concerns. That's clear. Authenticated and anonymous access to digital information. Here you have some secured way. And I have a way to ask for secured access from a particular person. Well, that can be faked. You can have anonymous access to that. What does that mean? That means I have no idea who got that access. That raises some issues. Now I don't know who just got that data, so I can't track it anymore. That's a problem. Commercial and government censorship. This is, a, this is an issue. You saw this in Blown to Bits. It happens in many countries. China has the Great Firewall. What does censorship mean? It's very easy to censor data. It's even it's harder to convince the society to help you in censoring it, but that's one of the things that China has done, is they've convinced Many people decided to say, you know, it's right to keep the bad stuff out, the Western bad ideas out. So many people volunteer to be part of the Great Firewall, which is a people who are going online and trying to squash protests, to squash, squash the truth often. It's a scary thing. Government censorship. Open source and licensing of content. So open source is the idea that anybody can help write code, and it just goes out to the world. It's open source. It's wonderful. It's celebrated by most computer scientists. Well, that's great. I now use this open source content in my digital, in my self-driving car. My self-driving car then drives into a wall, killing some people. Who do I blame? Who do I sue? That open source content was written by 100 people. Are they all to the list? Because it's the one person. That raises serious issues of ownership. Okay? Commercial access to music and movie streaming, downloads and streaming. Sorry, movie downloads and streaming. We talked about this before in terms of the ability to be able to, I got the movie, but wait, it's uncompressed. What if I then put it on another 
file sharing thing, and now everyone else has it. So that brings up issues of how you protect it, how you deal with it, who's, who, is it legal for me to just put over here? Oh, it was over here, someone just saw it. I had it on a website for myself, I didn't have a link to it, but someone found it and they got it now. Is it my fault, is it their fault, what's the issue? And access via peer-to-peer -peer networks, which is a way to share a lot of digital content. All these things bring up legal and ethical concerns in terms of sharing data that's not yours. Almost done, almost done. Creative Commons is a great way to share remix. Creative Commons is an outstanding, outstanding technique. Uh, it is a system of, rather than copyright, it is an alternative to copyright that kind of should go hand in hand to allow for someone to share their data willingly without the need to actually contact them and find them. And they have many different licenses. I'm showing six here. Each one of them says CC for Creative Commons. By means attribution. If you use any Creative Commons work, which I do all the time, by the way, you see in the bottom right of this slide, it says the Creative Commons license. By means I have to give attribution. If you're using my slides, you're welcome to. You don't have to ask me. Just tell people that you got it from me. The next thing I have is NC, non-commercial. If you use my work, I, I happen to have the non-commercial license on my work, so it means you can't make money off it. You can use it, but you can't make money off of it, okay? And SA means share alike. It means you can remix it if you want to. Remix it all you want. But if you remix it, you have to then share this license also. It's like you can't just remix it and then remove the license in the version you shared. You have to kind of share alike, so the license has to propagate and follow on. The other alternative, by the way, is no derivative works. That means you can have my work, but you can't change it. You can't take a slide away. You have to take it as is. And many people have released it under that, not me. I have released it with derivations. You can take mine and remove a slide, add a slide. It's all fine. Enjoy yourself. Go crazy. But many people click the ND box, and they have that. So I'm now going to show you, uh, by the way, an open access to Creative Commons. Open access means journals and things are open to everybody. You don't have to pay behind a paywall to get access to the data. That's what open access means. Have enabled broad access to information, okay? So I'm now going to show you a movie about Creative Commons, and we'll close it out there. Thanks.